I'm going to share my top-down view of how I approach software complexity. And it's all about flattening the complexity curve. So by now, we all know that the necessary complexity of an overall system is never linear, is not exponential, and I would argue that it's not even a logistic type of curve. It's actually more kind of a step curve. When during the lifespan of the project, some requirements from users, data, or features will create those spikes of complexity. And so what we don't want is to start too high and over-anticipate because we might anticipate the wrong steps. But at the same time, we don't want to start too low either and stay too close of this curve because we will hit those walls. So for example, if we were going to do a SaaS application with one client, we wouldn't need multi-tenancy. But the issue is that as soon as we hit the two clients mark, then we need multi-tenancy, and then we have a short amount of time to implement it. And then everything goes haywire because either we put two clients in a single tenant architecture as a hack, very bad, or we rush the implementation of multi-tenancy, which is almost equally as bad. So what we want is to start a little higher and to anticipate the next step early, such as we can flatten the step. And then we do a rinse and repeat. And that gives us our second curve, which is our effective complexity curve. And that is our new goal and our new target. Now, within this curve, there's two areas. There's what we own and what we borrow. What we own is our code, our configuration, our custom tools, and so on. What we borrow is our tech stack, basically. So it's our libs, frameworks, services, and so on. Now, the question is, where do we put the line? One tendency is to say, well, we want to code as less as we can and own as less as we can. So we're going to use all-in-one solutions, such as we don't have to learn too much, and we're going to be very low. The problem of those solutions is that often they don't really scale with the application. And so while they are very good at the beginning, at some point, we're going to overcompensate with custom code, configuration files, and so on and our complexity will skyrocket. And then even worse is because often the solution to try to fit all possible requirements with an all-in-one solution, they tend to actually make the overhaul system over complex. And then everything kind of go to the unnecessary realm where we don't want to be. So what we want is actually have a more realistic curve. We start higher, we end higher, we're going to be higher than our dream, but much lower than our nightmares. And usually, it's better to be higher and flatter than lower and steeper. Now, that is very abstract. So here's kind of a couple guidelines or rule of thumb that I follow. Typically, from my experience, when we have easy first type of technology or type of solutions, we generate this exponential curve issue. Whereas when we go architecture first, where we are composing smaller parts as a whole, such as we can swap them when we need so, then usually we have a flatter line of complexity. And in fact, we always have an opportunity to even flatten more those curves by working on blueprints. And blueprints, they are not like all-in-one framework that try to fix and hard-code the patterns in a way, but more kind of a set of code or best practices that are built to scale. Not built to build something early, but built to continue to build something for a long time. Now, I have two cute but deep mantras to help me a little bit choose the technologies. And those are, lame is a new cool, dumb is a new smart. And with that, until next one, happy coding.